ladies and gentlemen, Jack Lemon. You know, I share something in common with an entire generation of Americans. The first drink that I ever had was a Shirley Temple. <laughs> Shirley Temple is a timeless star, a star that has never gone out. But first and always, there was the unspoiled little girl with corkscrew curls whose idealism and spunk could overcome a world of troubles. She was unsinkable, indestructible. She could high step with Bill Bojangles Robinson, play off Cary Grant, upstage Carol Lombard and Alice Faye, and sing with innocent splendor. Oh yeah, and when Lionel Barrymore forgot his lines, she remembered them for him. <laughs> this depression kid who supported her family, cheered up a nation, and became part of the American spirit. We made her a legend, but she insisted on being herself. She left films at an age when most of us are only beginning to make them. And what she left us was astonishment and wonder, a child who will forever define the magic of the movie screen. the dark, smiled at us, and we were hers ever after. The fairy tale unfolds on a quiet street in Santa Monica. Her mother prayed for a girl and got a golden child. They couldn't wait for Shirley to start dancing school. Gertrude picked Miss Meglin's, a favorite of talent scouts. Shirley made her debut in the comedy shorts called Baby Burlesques. She was three years old. She was a sensation in one reelers, but could she make it in a big studio movie? When Fox offered her a little number, she skipped down the back lot, prettied up in polka dots, and came out dancing. It was 1934, and there wasn't much to gladden the hearts of Americans. Tomorrows were just tomorrows. And then, out of the dark, we heard this sweet child's voice. On the good ship, lollipop, it's sweet trip to a candy shop where bonbons play. On the Sunday beach of Peppermint Bay. How splendid, said President Roosevelt, that for just 15 cents, we can go to the movies and forget our troubles when we see her smiling face. She was all dimples and 55 curls. Little Miss Fixit could melt the flintiest heart. But we loved her best, spunky and sassy. Who are you? They call me the Little Colonel. What under the sun do they call you that for? Because I've got such a temper. I stamp my foot when I get mad. I get all red in the face. Shirley Temple was Hollywood's top box office attraction. She had rescued 20th Century Fox from bankruptcy and salvaged the nation's spirits. She was the model for every child every mother ever wanted. Hers was the most famous face in the world. She teamed up with the incomparable Bill Robinson, Mr. Bojangles, in three films. Unforgettable dancing, an unforgettable pairing.
face it, Shirley Temple was a showstopper. At the peak of her popularity, 19 writers were assigned to develop movies for her. She starred in all the children's classics, from Heidi to Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm. And as much as we wanted to keep her our little girl, time wouldn't let us. Suddenly, she was all grown up. It was the end of an era for us and the enchanting little girl who was already an immortal. After 37 films of pretending to be someone else, Shirley said, it's time for me to be me. Shirley Temple Black settled into quiet domesticity. And when her children were grown, she came on stage again, steadily working toward a run for the U.S. Congress. She lost, but she didn't quit. She remained in public service, and in 1974, she was named United States Ambassador to Ghana. I, Shirley Temple Black, do solemnly swear. She was the first woman chief of protocol. She continued on in foreign service, and served as America's ambassador to Czechoslovakia when the weight of Soviet rule was still upon it. I think I've been most fortunate by having the opportunities presented to me because of little Shirley. She was our princess, as close to the real thing as we'll ever get. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Henry Kissinger. I have been a fan of Shirley Temple Black since childhood. When I saw her movies dubbed in German. So when I finally met her, I was quite surprised that she spoke English. <laughs> <clears throat> but that was not the only surprise waiting for me when I had the privilege of working with Shirley in the State Department. Shirley quite simply ran counter to every basic rule taught foreign service officers. Rule number one, never compete with the Secretary of State for public attention. <laughs> rule number two, don't even think of overshadowing him. And then Shirley showed that she was meant to be a star wherever she served. She was a great ambassador as chief of protocol in Ghana and in Czechoslovakia in those dramatic days when communism crumbled. Shirley has said that when she was making her first feature film, her mother kissed her on the cheek and said, sparkle. And so she did. From the good ship, Lollipop, to her splendid tours of duty on America's ship of state. You often expressed a special fancy for some men and women who made state visits so special 
when you were chief of protocol. A few of them are here to salute you. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Air Force Band. United States Air Force Honor Guard. Ambassador Black's interest in foreign affairs and world peace led to her role as this nation's delegate to the United Nations. The entire fifth grade class of the United Nations International School has come from New York to present her with a musical bouquet. Ambassador Black, your government service is very impressive. But, you know, as a frustrated hoofer, I've always, I think, most admired your dancing, perhaps. The dancing of Shirley Temple. So, so the producer suggested that perhaps tonight I would do a few steps just in tribute to you. So this afternoon, uh, I, uh, I, I gave them a little sample of what I intended to do. And so, <laughs> the next suggestion was, we better get somebody a little younger to do justice to Shirley Temple, the dancer. So I'm simply going to salute you and then stand aside for youth. <laughs> 